I'm Jen from the Frugal Friends Podcast, and when I'm not cutting the end of the toothpaste tube off to get that last little bit of toothpaste, I'm stacking Benjamins. Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and is it Monday already? Well, you're in luck because we're back to help you be better with your money. Ever wish you could hit the open road without much money and just make trades? We'll talk to one woman who's traveling the nation in a bus named Bubba on today's show about how to trade your way to your destination. Say hello to writer Heather Jacks. And just like we all want to erase Mondays sometimes, wouldn't it be great to just wipe out some debt? Well, some people have had some debt canceled due to coronavirus, but sadly, it's not that simple. We'll break it down for you during our headline segment. Plus, we'll toss out the Haven Lifeline to Addie, who has a question about mortgage PMI. What does PMI stand for and what length should she take to avoid it? We'll all be wondering. And don't worry, don't worry, I'll keep this podcast afloat with my trivia. And now, two guys who are Mondays personified, it's Joe and O-J-J-J-J-G. And it's a pumpkin spice Monday here in the basement. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe Salci, High Average Show Money on Twitter and across the card table from me, the well, not brand, the borrowed card table, actually, from my friend Mike down the street. It's Mr. OG. Hey, uh, not the fake OG on Twitter. Just passed a thousand. Well, hell. Well, hell. <laughs> Don't care. See, I'll, I'll tell you what always drives me crazy is when somebody goes, when somebody's like. Uh, when somebody puts out a Facebook, hey, I'm at 999. Can anybody? Yes. And you did and that. You did that I a totally little bit. Did. I to, I only did it one. I've only done it one time, and I did it just because I <laughs> knew that it pissed you off. It does. Ever so he's like, "Hey, can you follow me so I can get to a 1000 I'm like, "Wow, vanity metric much?" But uh, good times. Oh, yeah, I, to, I totally, I totally needed the comma. Congratulations, man! When you get to f- you. when you get to five figures in your follower count, then call me. Oh, nice flex, nice flex. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, but how much whipped cream did you put in your coffee today? That's what I want to know. I got a bunch of whipped cream. Yeah. Non-fat milk, but with the whipped cream, because you can't take all the fun out of it. You got to leave some in. <laughs> Heather <laughs> Jacks. hundred calories. Got it. Listen to this, man. Heather Jacks with us today. Heather lives in a bus named Bubba and is a woman, according to her website, who's in her 50s and travels the world. We're going to talk about not just her lifestyle, but a recent piece she wrote on travel where it might not take money to travel. She has traded many, many things to travel from place to place, including carrying a pig and writing for people. So maybe take your skills to go see the world. Doesn't always take cash. Heather Jack's your day, by the way, today's show brought to you by student loan hero, ready to pay off your student loans. We thought so get your custom repayment plan today. See how you can lower interest rates, decrease monthly payments and find forgiveness. Get started at studentloanhero.com. Great show today. Heather Jacks is here. I got the pumpkin spice. I got OG with his thousand follower count. Let's get this party started. Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show. Our stacking Benjamin's headlines. Our first online comes to us from financialplanning.com last week. Social security cost of living came out. Mom, not happy, by the way. My favorite day of the year. It is. We have balloons. We get excited because mom thinks she's getting a pay raise from the government. This one wasn't good. Tobias Salinger writes this. More than 64 million social security beneficiaries will get their lowest, lowest cost of living adjustment in four years in 2021. Recipients will receive a 1.3% uptick in their benefit payments in January. Oh, is that, we're not cheering for that? No, no, mom's not happy. That's the lowest in four years, man. Cost of living for the next year is 30 basis points lower than in 2020 and less than half of what it was in 2019. As costs continue to go up, 
we find Social Security not going up as fast, OG. It's my favorite. They don't uh, they don't include food or energy in their calculations. You know, the two things that nobody uses, especially <laughs> retirees. <laughs> nobody eats or heats their house. But other than that, here's what inflation really does. It is another lesson about a few things. I mean, inflation is so important here. I think the first lesson, OG, is for people that don't like the stock market, you have to find a way to beat inflation. You have to find a way to beat inflation. Social Security not beating inflation, trying to keep up, but not beating inflation. Your money in a savings account, definitely not beating inflation. Yeah. I mean, you think that's bad. Ally, uh, my high yield savings account that I got at Magnify Money, 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6, yeah. Uh, so there's not a thing that beats inflation other than stocks. Real estate. Okay, whatever. Reads. Same, same. Stocks, real estate, historically. Yeah. yeah. So you got to get there. You I mean, be an owner. Not a loner. <laughs> Seriously, that's, you're yes. joking, but that's the thing, right? You can't you can't lend your money to the bank. No, I just like how creative interest. you are for a Monday morning. Be an owner, not a loner. That's very I wish, nice. I wish, I wish that. Uh, TM. I'm sure that I'm the first person that's ever said that. TM. Copyright. C with a circle. You are the first person. But I think there's also something else here, which is relying on government benefits for your retirement, which... Every statistic I've ever seen shows that more than half of retired Americans do is a mistake, is a mistake. Well, it's difficult. And if you're already at that spot, you know, you got to be really particular about your, your costs. You got to be really particular about your spending. And if you're in the situation right now where that's your income and that's all of your income, there's not a lot of outs, you know, if your food or your energy costs have gone up more than one and a third percent. Then, then it's going to be a little, be a little tough. But you can look at other things that help that. I don't know if everybody else does this, but I totally use the flat billing plan from the electric company. I use the flat billing plan from the gas company for the natural gas bill because it just smooths all that stuff out. You know, if you've got a fixed paycheck, you need to have some fixed expenses. And if you live in an area that has high variability with stuff like that, especially around things like energy. It helps to kind of even the months out. That's a great point, you saying that, because these studies show that those billing plans aren't necessarily cheaper. You're giving the energy company a little more money ahead of time, right? So yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it helps them. But for you, the most important thing for you, OG, to your point, is that you have to be able to reliably save an amount. And the easiest way to save it is to make it automatic. And the only way you can make it automatic is if that money's reliably there every month. So doing those plans, even though it helps the the big bad entity that you're sending it to, really helps you a ton. Here in Texas, for example, our electric bill is astronomical in July, August, and September, but kind of sort of not bad in December, January, and February. You know, there's not the air conditioning running and so on and so forth. So if we have the opportunity to smooth that out a little bit, there's worse places for me to keep my <laughs> to keep my extra money than uh, than in the bank account of the uh, local power company. Our second headline comes to us from the Motley Fool. Christy Bieber wrote this one: debt canceled by the Justin's, coronavirus. Justin's relative. Yes, Justin's uh, second cousin by marriage. Cool. Congratulations, Christy. Don't know if any of that's true, but you're welcome. <laughs> Probably never heard that. Yes, yeah, I'm sure we're the first ones. Uh, Kristen writes, because of the coronavirus, millions of Americans are struggling to pay their bills. Some may be seeking debt settlement or loan modification programs that change the terms of their repayment plans. Unfortunately, if lenders forgive any portion of your debt, which has been happening a lot lately, you could face a very unpleasant surprise. You may owe taxes on the forgiven amount. So so, so let's let's go through this. You don't have enough money to pay your bills. The company says, you know what? We'll take one for the team here. It's been really tough on a lot of people. You were great until this. We're going to cancel the debt. The IRS calls that value and still taxes it. IRS is like, welcome to the party. Hey. Now we pay tax. <laughs> yeah, you receive some benefits. So good luck. There is some opportunity to waive that if you were insolvent when or during the time of the forgiveness. So insolvent means negative net worth, but work with the CPA on that because there's a little teeny tiny wiggle room. 
But if you've got money and instead you get a, a loan forgiveness program of some kind for something, surprise, surprise. <laughs> something that's not a surprise, by the way, is uh, the Jordan Harbinger show. OG podcast you should definitely check out because because you're listening to OG and I, you're a fan of high quality, fascinating podcast hosted by interesting people. I freaking love this copy right here. Like there is, there is no, why thank you Jordan's team for saying that about us. The show covers wide range of topics through weekly interviews with heavy hitting guests, Oliver Stone on the show recently. How great is that? Astronauts on the show, fake psychics, some dude who was wondering if he's inadvertently a sugar daddy paying for all his girlfriend's stuff. And when he couldn't afford to do it anymore, she broke up with him. Hmm. Mrs. OG is going to break up with you any day. Is it? If you don't, I've been worried about it for years. <laughs> There's an episode for everybody, no matter what you're into a uh, professional art forger somehow made millions of dollars while being chased with the feds and the mafia. He's uh, done all kinds of, Different episodes. It's a surprise every time he hits the mic. Podcast covers a lot, but one constant is his ability to pull useful pieces of advice from his guests. And I promise you, you're going to find something interesting, relevant to apply to your own life, whether it's just a slight mindset tweak or something that's going to boost your productivity. OG and I really enjoy the show. We think you will as well. Search for The Jordan Harbinger Show. That's H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening to us right now. It's Jordan Harbinger Show. I think our takeaways, not just to listen to Jordan when you're done with us, but I think a big takeaway here, OG, is, is wrapped up in the Social Security headline, which is inflation is a bear. And you have to realize that safety may be in assets that don't make you comfortable over the short term. Those are the things that are going to make you more comfortable, meaning index funds, real estate investment trusts. Well, and inflation is the silent killer. The impact of it is not felt year to year. It's felt over a quarter century. So make sure you got money that keeps up with it. Heather Jacks was raised in Indian land in southeastern Oregon until age 15 when she left. And of course, then she didn't just go, you know, across to Washington or down to California. Nope. She went to Australia as an experimental exchange student in quotes. She came back at 16, went to college and began traveling during the 80s. She was in radio. She recently hopped on an Amtrak train and traversed the country. By the end of that trip, she had over 10,000 miles on planes, trains, and her bus, Bubba the Bus, a short bus she purchased in Nashville. We're going to talk to her about Bubba here, converting him into a tiny home, and now she lives the schooly life full-time. She's got a fantastic blog. She's got an amazing story. We found her because Cheryl was reading about her and said, you got to try to get this woman on, and I'm so happy that she decided she would come on. Heather Jacks joining us on today's show. And on my dad's shortwave radio, it's my new friend, somebody I've been so excited to talk to. Heather Jacks joins us. How are you? Hello, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to be here. And life is beautiful. Well, it, um, it, 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 but a big question you must get, Heather, all the time is where is here right now? <laughs> right now, it is in the bathroom in the shower stall of a Wynn Hotel <laughs> in uh, New, New York City in Manhattan. That's where it is at this moment. <laughs> that is fantastic. Making the shower your studio. I am, yes. <laughs> yes, you, you learn to improvise a lot when you live on a bus full time. Well, well and tell me about the bus. First of all, how did the bus get named Bubba? I bought this bus two years ago in Nashville, Tennessee, and that is a Southern name. And I just, I bought it. It was a, it was a Nashville, Tennessee Titans tailgating bus. It was by the football team. They used it as a tailgating bus. So that's why I bought it. And um, Bubba seems like the right name. It's a Southern name, although now he's purple. So 
you know, people are like, oh, you need to rename it. I'm like, no, it's still Bubba. Everyone in the South is Bubba. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, it is so funny. I just moved back to Texarkana, Texas, and you're right. I have two friends named Bubba, <laughs> and I probably know four. And they're always the nicest guys, too. Your schoolie's got to be nice. It's the best schoolie ever. He has never let me down. He's happy to take me to nice restaurants or dive bars just as easily. And um, so I love Bubba. Bubba's my love. How did COVID affect your lifestyle? If you're living in Bubba and you're traveling around the nation and seeing what you want to see and doing what you want to do, how did, how did COVID change the game for you, Heather? When I first started the traveling, I had a great plan. I had my national parks pass, which is often where you stay. I had my Planet Fitness Pass. COVID happened, and of course, those things closed down. So I was really just, it was a fix. I'm not going to lie. And I was, you know, I didn't really have a place to park. I didn't have a place to dump my toilet. I didn't have a place to shower. And so I started just getting super creative. And you kind of have to during Corona. One of the things I did was I bartered. I would approach random people and try to explain to them like, hey, you know, I need to park my bus. I don't actually need any facilities right now, but I'd sure like to park my bus here on your field. And, uh, you know, is there something I can do for you to do that? And um, I did that a lot. So I spent about a month in the Umpqua Valley in the wine area of this southern part of Oregon doing exactly that. I did all kinds of things. I groomed horses. You'd be surprised. So I'm over 50. I don't know if I can say that, but I'm I'm well over 50. And I'm you can say I'm over I'm over 52, Heather, but I think the rule is that I can say or you can say that, but I can't say that. So you're well, good. Yeah, the things are the thing is is that you've learned all these what you do is you dust off a, a lifetime of skills and they're valuable. So things like typing on a typewriter are valuable today. Learning how to like knowing how to drive a stick shift, which I know how to do, was valuable. So it was very interesting, all these things that you know that I know how to do had value in this kind of bartering economy that that I really had to enter into. And I, I just had to because so it's a lot of younger people who are out there on the road living full time in a schoolie. And again, so mine's a schoolie. That means it's a short bus. Yeah. It is 19 feet long. That is 80 square feet of living space. So that's very small. So it's a very short little bus. A lot of young people do that. And one of the things I notice is that, and this is just going to be a rash generalization, but somehow showering and living on a bus tend to be mutually exclusive out there. And um, <laughs> that was not my case. I needed to shower on a regular basis. And so I bartered for showers a lot. I, when COVID first happened, I was actually in California and I had left just a little bit before Gavin Newsom closed the state down. And so then I ended up on Paiute land in Eastern Nevada and I bartered a lot out there. Then while I was heading up there, I actually ended up transporting a little pot-bellied pig in exchange for gas. I have a bus, the pig fit. So I was able to do that. And you just, yeah, it's crazy what people need and what you can offer. And if you just get creative and just kind of let it roll, you're like, hey, you know, I think I, I can do that. And um, so that's what I did a lot. I want to dive into some of these stories. Let's start off with the letter to the editor story, <laughs> because this is when your typing on a typewriter skill came yeah. in handy, I think. Came in very handy. And um, it was an alpaca farm. So there was a lot of space. Bubba could easily fit there. And I needed a place to park. And it was ran by this old guy named Charlie. He must have been 150. And um, yeah, so I was like, well, is there something I can do? And he goes, well, I'd like you to, or do you know how to type? He actually asked me if I knew how to type. And then, and this was his words, on one of the old typewriters, not that newfangled thing. And I was like, actually, I do. So I typed letters to the editor. He was very upset with many of the things that were going on in his town. So I wrote a lot of uh, venomous letters <laughs> to the editor. But they still have newspapers in some of those places. And um, so I did that for a couple hours. And then I had a place to be that night. And it was really great. And the alpacas were amazing. I actually got to knit a hat. I still have the hat. We uh, There's an alpaca on his farm that he named Antonio Banderas. And I don't know why he named it that, but that was the name. It was his first alpaca. So we took its fiber and I knitted an, um, an alpaca hat. I still have that hat. I love that hat. You can see it on my Instagram. I really like that hat. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I don't know about you, but I still prefer the feel of the old typewriter. Do you, I mean, you write way more than I do. I just write scripts <laughs> for the show. Do you prefer that old style feel? You know, I prefer to write actually with my oh. very beautiful ballpoint pen and my beautiful white paper. That is actually my preferred method. I am trying now to do the voice text thing. I'm not loving it because 
they often just don't understand me. And then I get crazy things that I don't even understand. Get that from Siri without even trying. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't say anything remotely close to that. Yeah, I have that. I have that experience. Tell me about the pig. You traded by moving a pig. That's one hell of a story. <laughs> I was actually in um, Looning, Nevada. What had actually happened was my radiator had blown up. And so another thing that's really been amazing for me is how mechanical I am. If you're going to live on a bus, you definitely need to understand how that bus works. And I'm really good. I am amazing myself at how great I have become mechanically. And anyway, but that radiator was a bit more of a, I bit off a bit more than I could chew with that one. And so I pulled out the radiator and then I realized that it was really a complex issue. It's a 1989, essentially it's a, it's a van. So everything is like in a little, you know, teeny space. As yeah. big as a toy. Well, I think and, especially those vans, right? I mean, they're known for having it in, in a little wedged in spot. Yeah, it was terrible. So this trucker had come up and he was actually helping me like put it back in and put water in it so that I could, um, get and I could only go about nine miles down the road and then it would be bone dry again so finally I was at a place I was not only was my radiator broken now it's also out of gas because the nearest gas was 181 miles away and my bus just it was just it was it wasn't my day and uh so this guy came up and I you know was explaining my situation and he said, well, I don't have enough gas to get you up to where I was headed and he said but I do have enough to get you to looning so he said um you know uh I'm on my way to visit Lance. And he goes, and I got a pig. If you take it over there, he'll give you gas. And I said, well, it was really going to depend on the pig. Because honestly, if it's a boar, we're going to have to hard pass on that. But he brought me a little pot-bellied pig. He put it in my bus. And I'm, I delivered it like 80 miles down the road and got gas, got a fresh breakfast from Lance's wife. It's a crazy place, man. Hopefully no bacon with breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I kind of sense that might be the that might have been the demise of the pig, but that is that is I just needed gas. But this guy has this little dilapidated shop out there. And it was dilapidated, man. This is something out of breaking bad. You're just like I was lacking faith that he was gonna be able to assist me, but he opens this big door that's practically rolling off the hinges, and he has got a collection of Harley Davidsons in there that would just, just are awe inspiring. He had a, an Indian, he had a, the knuckleheads. It was wow. shocking. So I spent um, most of that day with him actually just looking at all his treasures. I, I happen to like bikes, so it <laughs> worked out really well. Um, but I, I tend to get a lot of that people. I tend to talk to people. I'm, it's weird in Corona because people, you really have to be wary when you're approaching people now. It's, it's a little different. You know, whereas before, I think, especially on the country, you know, they're much more like able to help you. But now that's a little more like people are standing off a little bit, but I still will talk to people and smile with my eyes. Usually once they realize that I'm a girl out here doing this and then they've like reconciled in their mind that, wow, she's kind of crazy. Then they're like, OK, how can we help? <laughs> well, but, that was that was what I wondered, though, Heather. You know, you're talking about how you were wondering if he could even help you before you got to yeah. see the Harleys. Is, 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 is there ever a time? I mean, I think that I might be just a little afraid of some of these people. I don't know who they are. I don't know anything about them. Is there ever a time when you feel concerned for your safety? I've only had two instances that I have been concerned. And um, both of them, honestly, I'm actually, uh, I'm very acutely aware of safety measures that, and especially that women have to take when they're traveling alone on the road. I wish that wasn't the case. It is, it is the case. And so I have, um, I have, you know, pepper spray. I have a taser. I have an air horn. Best thing you could buy. Air horn is awesome. So there's only been two times. One was in Wyoming, and it was I had spent 10 days camping in the Grand Tetons, and it was amazing. Oh, my gosh. Blow your mind. First time I've ever seen a bald eagle in real life. Um, first time I saw a, a bighorn sheep. Oh, man, Wyoming. And I had a situation out there that really, really could have gone sideways, really in a bad way. And a, a law enforcement official came randomly to the middle of nowhere, which is where I was out. I was out on forest service land and, and was able to thwart that situation. Wow. And I have lived that a lot in my mind since just realizing all of the, just those errors that I made in judgment to put myself in a situation like that, that brief moment. And then I recently got robbed in Nashville, which kind of sucked. Um, it was a broad daylight, 10 o'clock in the morning. I was filling up my tank at a, a car wash right on the side, not in the cubicle, like on the main road. 
And these two guys just straight up, man, came just right up 10 o'clock in the morning. And yeah, I took my generator, took my refrigerator, just robbed me. And uh, so I phoned the police and there's tons of pawn shops, which is probably where all that stuff ended up. But so that was like, again, another moment of just like, oh, you know, that brief moment, you know, they were very bold and very fast. And had they paused, I probably would have been like, oh, you know, like I, I might have, you know, alerted me. But they didn't. They were just walk right up. And yeah, I was straight up robbed at 10 o'clock in the morning in Nashville, Tennessee. Wait a minute. Did they sneak around to the other side of the car or did they straight up Absolutely tell you not. that they were robbing you? No, absolutely not. They walked right up to me. Um, they grabbed the stuff they wanted. <laughs> and then I was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? They're like, oh, what's going on is y'all probably better just need to turn around and pretend like you don't see shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was like, uh, here's the bright side of that story for me. I put up an Instagram story and this, uh, the guys from the Margaritaville Hotel right in downtown Nashville, they responded to that story. They're like, oh, this is so lame that you got robbed in Nashville. Come down here. We're going to set you up for the night so you can enjoy downtown Nashville on us. <laughs> so I went and had a good old time, drank bourbon, met boys, listened to country music. It was all good. <laughs> I was thinking it was like a lose win situation, to, to turning yeah. lemonade or lemons into lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always bring the vodka so it works out. <laughs> Well, and it's interesting because the amount of time that you've been doing this, I mean, twice is not that much. So let's talk about the positive side, though. You said oh, yeah. that you approach people. And as you know, Heather, people are are not, you know, don't go up to people and say, hey, can I barter this? Can I do this? Can I like how do you charm people into even considering bartering with you? I was, as you may know, was raised on Indian land until I was 15 and barter was a way of life. We didn't have money. Money didn't exist on Indian land when I was growing up there. So bartering just is supernatural for me. And it's a little rusty now, but it's just a very natural, you always have something of value that somebody else, you know, it's just, it just makes sense. I love bartering, but I'm also not in terribly intimidated by people. Um, I mean, if they seem sketchy, then I, you know, you kind of trust, you got to trust your gut. You're like, hmm, yeah, I probably shouldn't approach them. But yeah, growing up on Indian land, definitely that is how they, at the time I grew up, that is, that was the economy. So I'm very comfortable with that. But are you saying then that you hear this thing about 10,000 hours of practice, right? Are you saying that you've had 10,000 hours and if somebody <laughs> wants to get better, just do it? No, I don't ascribe to that philosophy of 10,000 hours. And I, it's a beautiful philosophy and it probably works for some people. I really ascribe, I'm going to just quote Tesla. And Tesla said, if you want to understand the mysteries of the universe, think of frequency, energy, and vibration. And that's what it is. So I trust my gut. I was raised on Indian land. So I wasn't raised in a, a, a traditional home that has, you know, traditional um, religious orthodoxies. So I tend to just very much trust my gut a lot. Um, I left Indian land when I was 15 years old. I'm a white girl. And growing up on Indian land as a white girl is not, it's no joy, but I left when I was 15 and I'd gone to, my grandmother had the idea that I should go to white school. So she sent me to white school far away and it was a terrible experiment. But while I was there, I learned about the exchange program and this was back in the eighties. So I became an experimental exchange student. And what that meant was I went to Australia for 10 and a half months, almost a year by myself. I was 15 years old. And I lived in the Outback, which is basically Indian land, but halfway around the globe. Right. And then I was like, well, so apparently God does have a sense of humor, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, again, so I was in that. And, but that's really where the wanderlust began. When I came back, I, I just, I had a hard time fitting in before. I just really had a hard time fitting in after I came back. I, I came back to high school. They put me in high school. And, you know, high school kids, you know, they're, going to prom and they're doing winter formals and they're making out with boys under bleachers. And I was living on a sheep station and in, in, in a, a opal mining, you know, so I had no relatability. So I finished school at a very young age and started college. And yeah, I just have been traveling. That just made sense to me. That and is. I've always been super blessed, just blessed. My biggest job was with Starbucks Coffee Company. <laughs> that came about because it was, again, before internet, I had read an article and Howard Schultz was quoted in it. And it was back in the early 90s. I wrote to him, I started writing to him and it would get mailed every month. And I'd be like, hey, you know, when you're ready to open stores in a remote market, I'm your girl, I'm your girl. And after about a year, he sent me or they sent me a plane ticket because there used to be a day you could do that. And I went to Seattle and he was hired 
So I worked for Starbucks on and off for 23 years. But when I first started, they only had 95 stores. So I was going around and just helping open a store. And then I'd go do my thing for however long I wanted to go do my thing for. And uh, then I'd come back and open a store. So it worked out brilliantly. So I'm very used to that. I'm very used to even like, even with someone like Howard Schultz at that time being like, Hey, I'm your girl. If you need someone to do this, I'm the person. This is what I can do. I'm very confident in that. And it's kind of bartering because that job didn't exist when I talked, you know, when I did that, <laughs> it wasn't a job that existed. He was like, I hope one day we can be in Portland, Oregon. That was where he was at that time. So were you, with that few number of stores, were you talking with Howard directly? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's it's, much more accessible. (laughs) Sure. Right. People. (laughs) Yeah. No, at that point in the store, I'm sure it's just Heather and her buddy Howard just having a chat. I don't know her buddies, uh, but now, but um, (laughs) but yeah, pictures. In fact, I I saw him a few months ago, briefly at an event, and I showed him pictures, and his wife was like, oh my gosh, I remember that hair. (laughs) I remember the one who used to have hair. Well, you make money while working on the road. And I'm sure a question you're asked a lot is, do you have any tips for people to actually make money while you're on the road? I mean, when you work for Starbucks, obviously you had a paycheck and you could travel. Right Now you're always drumming up business. How do you, mm-hmm. how do you make money and travel at the same time? I chase gigs. So and that doesn't work for everybody and it shouldn't. But I will tell you this, when I have my teaching credential, but you can get your TFL or your TESOL certification. And that's a big boom industry right now. I mean, with online teaching, great money. I hated it. I did it for like just a few times. I was like, oh, this is, I have to get a schedule. You have to stop. You have to like log in and actually teach. And it was all just too much for me. I'm not going to lie. But it is a great way to make money. Online teaching, great way to make money. And there's tons of great companies that that you can teach like regular classes. You can teach business people. There's even ones that work like apps like Uber and Lyft. And then you can just sign on. And if somebody wants an English class, there you are. It's really a brilliant, brilliant way to make money. I didn't love it. So I I did not do that. Um, I did it a couple of times. I was like, "Mm, yeah, I don't like this. I don't like stopping and having to get organized. I just don't. (laughs) (laughs) If I'm driving and wanting to go somewhere, that's just what I'd rather do. So some of the ways I've made money, I use Craigslist a lot. I chase a lot of gigs on Craigslist. I am very active on LinkedIn. And I am very active on Instagram. And I connect with people and just talk to them. And most of my jobs come that way. So for an example, um, last month, it was last month or two months ago, I started in Denver, Colorado. And I did a tutoring for a Thai woman who had only been in the country for three months. And then I did a mock jury. I was like a mock juror on a zoom call, like, you know, in a pretend, you know, court case. And these are all paid things. Then I went and I directed traffic at a movie theater for like three nights, three different places, but three nights in a row. I live in a bus so I can go. Right. I went to Memphis and I voiced a climate change robot. I did an infomercial <laughs> for an office chair. Oh yeah. You, if you're willing to do stuff, there's work. And um, so I did an infomercial for an office chair, which was pretty, um, that paid pretty well. And And right now I'm in New York because I'm doing a, I do a lot. I have a couple of modeling contracts. So I do modeling, which is great money when you can get it. You know, COVID definitely impacted that. There's a ton of things you can do. And there's lots of freelance work. If you are a freelancer and, you know, like you always read those books, like, you know, oh, give up your day job and, you know, make 30,000 in 30 days off a blog or whatever. Yeah. And I'm, I know those books because I have a Kindle full of them, but, um, (laughs) I have not had the experience of that. I'm still not a 30, you know, millionaire. So um, there is a lot of great freelance work. So if you, for example, if you're a graphic artist or you can proofread or these are things you like doing, man, there's good sites for that. Readsy is a great site for that. Readsy is a great one. And the other one is 99D, which is a little site out, it's a big site actually out of um, Oakland. That's a 99designs, right? Yeah. I, as a buyer, use them regularly and I've had great experiences. And I always think that, oh, you know, if you're creative, like if you can draw or if you can proofread or you can, yeah. you know, design, I just think these would be maybe great things to do. But my personal experiences with teaching, I think that's really got great potential if you enjoy teaching and can keep some kind of a schedule. Otherwise, chasing gigs, I get a lot off Instagram. So one of the things I've been doing a lot lately is uh, doing bourbon tastings out on the bourbon trail. Oh, that's yeah. tough. I bet that fun. that's got to be a tough job. Somebody's well, got to do that. Yeah. Oh, I don't man. like bourbon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work in the wine industry down in Southern California. So I do a lot of wine stuff. 
But again, you'd just be surprised. And right now, Corona, the way it's, you know, manifesting across our country, and I've seen it manifesting in varied ways. Right now in New York, it is closed down. This city is, I almost cried when I arrived here yesterday because I used to live in New York. And it's just a shell of the city that it was even last year. I was like, it was like this weird, like, I was just like feeling like, yeah, the world is, the world could end and I'm going to be out here on my bus, like Mad Max going across, you know, this, and, but this soon that passed, but it is weird when you come out of places after being gone for like 10 days and then you're like, what happened? You're what like that. <laughs> right, right. You're like that. You're like that meme that I'm sure you've seen that you've been prepping for this your whole life. You're kidding me. I, I already have a bus. I know how to stay at a national park. I can go off in the wilderness. I'm good. I'm good. I stay on a lot of Forest Service lands. In Forest Service, I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of the Forest Service. Everything I sell, everything, um, I have a little Patreon page. I, I sell uh, some of my articles. I have a current column in Photos Travel. It is not a lot, but man, I donate right back to the National Parks Conservation. I'm a big fan of the Forest Service. They are amazing. Every time, uh, without them, I wouldn't have had the experience I've had. Because what happens is I go to a town or a place or a space and I phone and the Forest Service will answer that phone. And I say, hey, you know, I've got this 19 foot schoolie, blah, blah, blah. They're like, you know what? Here's a place I think you would do really well. Like you're not going to have trouble getting up there. You're going to be fine, blah, blah, blah. And um, they are wonderful. I even went and picked up uh, one, um, like they had printed maps for me because, you know, I'm on a bus and I don't have a printer. They had left in Tillamook and they had left a note, a post-it note, just so you know, you're amazing. And I still <laughs> have it. Oh my God, Forest Service, I love you. Those people love their job is what it is. You know, they're like, yeah, somebody's coming out to the Tetons, you know, in the middle of when there's nobody out here. You they know? do love their job. They I just, do. we just did uh, seven national parks while we traveled West and all of the Rangers that we met were just, they were such nature geeks in the best Aren't way possible. It was awesome. <laughs> The way they'd nerd out about everything from the birds that were around to plate tectonics to everything. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, by the way, on that on that note, you've been to so many of the national parks out there. Do you have a favorite? I was going to ask you that. The park <laughs> I haven't been to is Bryce, and that is the one I wanted to go to, and I didn't make it yet. We didn't and do Bryce one. either. We've we've gone uh -huh. to, and, and we didn't do Arches either, but we did go to Zion. Yeah. And, uh, but not this time, but I got to tell angels landing. I, oh, I almost lost my crap on a doing the angels <laughs> landing thing. I thought I was going to die up there, Heather. <laughs> so I've been out here on the Appalachian trail for the last, you know, like when I got back with you, I was in the Appalachian trail and, um, oh my goodness. Woo. That is, but I definitely thought there were times I was like, I have pictures of the signs that say for the next mile, you're going to be on your hands and knees scrambling. And I'm like, okay, people do this all the time. How much scrambling? And they literally mean that you are scrambling. So you get up there and I'm tasting metal in my mouth, man, my head between oh. my knees. And like, okay. And then I'm like, oh my God, am I this out of shape? Am I going to have a heart attack? I have my bear horn. I've got my, I've got my air horn. I've got my air horn. Come on, come. And I'm, um, but then you you emerge, you summit something, and oh my word, it's I've really gone into mountain climbing during this last, I've been across the country three times now on my bus, but this last trip especially, because boy, you climb a mountain, or even a big hill in my case, let's just call it what it is, and, uh, <laughs> it just teaches you to rise above your own limitations, and once you're there, man, abundance and beauty as far as the eye can see that is what you see. There's nothing else. And man, I'm all about that. And it just really puts some perspective on life and the way, you know, the way things are. And yeah, I just love it. And then of course I sing John Denver, you know, music because you have to, you have to, I get given. <laughs> I think you're contractually obligated. at that point. <laughs> And I really like the Grand Tetons. I had mm. no expectation when I went there. So I think that my mind was just blowing because I didn't have, yeah, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have an expectation. So I went there and I was just like, oh man, well, I mean, now you're just showing off up here. <laughs> that's why, that's the way I felt about Big Bend and about mm. uh, Death Valley. It was just, it attracts such unique people, number one, mm -hmm. and you get these crazy <laughs> stories that I just love hearing. And you find beauty in places where there's supposed to be none, you know, I mean, wow. everything is named after devil, Satan, uh, <laughs> demon, I mean, every single thing about these places, because they're places. Go. I mean, when we were in Death Valley a few weeks ago, every sign said you could die here, which, <laughs> which is, you know, you could, but it, it was surreal and beautiful and dangerous yeah. all in one. So that yeah. was, that was pretty neat. Heather, yeah. I would love to talk Thank forever, you. but I am I totally out of time. I'm going to do a few things. Number one, guys, if you want to follow Heather's travels, 
Her blog is travelswithbubba.com. Of course, it's called travelswithbubba.com, I should say. <laughs> Just a girl and her bus named Bubba. We'll link to that on our show notes page. Also, you wrote a book a few years ago that I want to make sure that I mentioned. That is My Headdress is on Fire, yeah. stories from a white girl growing up on and off Indian lamb, which, I mean, I'm looking at the, the Goodread <laughs> reviews and people loving it. Thanks so much for hanging out with Thank us. You. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, um, yeah, be blessed, you know, be safe, be sane and be spiritually uplifted. That's my hippie stuff. <laughs> hey, trivia fans. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And aren't Mondays just the worst? I don't mean to be a hater, but come on, Monday. You got to know that you can do better. I think I've got a little plan that'll help all of us deal with Mondays. But before I unveil this little slice of genius, that actually raises a good question. While we all hate Mondays, which day of the week is actually the worst for workplace productivity? I'll be back faster than you can take another trip to the water cooler to avoid the TPS report your boss keeps asking about. Well, I know based on the surveys we've done, lots of your business owners or you are closely in touch with the business owner. And if you are somebody who needs to know more about running a business, you already know that it's tough. You might be making it harder on yourself than necessary, though. Don't let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down anymore. Time to upgrade to NetSuite. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it. You know, somebody gives the analogy with me, OG, that when you're doing your five... When you're looking at your financial picture, it's kind of like on a road trip. And if you're headed across country on a road trip, do you have four dashboards or one? You're supposed to have one. Just like using budgeting or tracking software that aggregates everything for your personal financial system, NetSuite is the same for your business. NetSuite by Oracle is the world's number one cloud business system. It gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need all in one place instantaneously. So whether you're doing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Join over 21,000 companies using NetSuite right now. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash stacker. Schedule your free product tool right now. netsuite.com slash stacker. That's netsuite.com slash stacker. Well, if you're ready to pay off your student loans, you have come to the right place. By the way, congratulations on having a strategy, number one. And even before you have a strategy, thinking about getting there, it's this thing that people forget to do, OG, which is just commit to doing something. Commit to doing something with your student loans and get your act together. Yeah, and there's a lot of different solutions and strategies associated with paying off your student loans. Especially now with all the COVID related yeah. stuff going on. Yep. Student Loan Hero has all the latest, whether it is the COVID repayment plans, things changing all the time in Washington with regard to student loans, whether it's refinancing, lowering your payments, forgiveness, Student Loan Hero has quizzes, calculators, all the different products that you can use to get ahead more quickly. My favorite area of Student Loan Hero, the must read section like the six best lenders to refinance and consolidate student loans in 2020, the ultimate guide to paying off student loans faster, or should I rehabilitate or consolidate my defaulted federal loans? Those are all at studentloanhero.com. When you're ready to start your quest out of student loan debt, studentloanhero.com. Hey, trivia fans, I'm your less than chipper, thanks to a major case of the Mondays, trivia guy, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And as your favorite presidential candidate, hashtag Doug 2020, I think it's time to remind you of the most important plank in my Doug 2020 platform. Here it is. When elected, I promise you that because of all the misery that comes with the territory called Monday, I'm going to institute a mandatory time and a half hourly rate on Mondays from now on. Who's not looking forward to ending the weekend now, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm the man, hear it every day. Now that you have another reason why I'm the best candidate in this race, let's get back to today's trivia. Question was, which day of the week is actually the worst for workplace productivity? Uh, it's actually a little bit of a trick question because there are two days tied for the worst, and those aren't Monday. They're actually 
Thursday and Friday. Wait a minute, if we're so non-productive, why even work at all? Now there's something to consider. All right, I'm off to try to break out of these Monday blues. See ya. See, I said Friday, you said Thursday. I was kind of surprised when you said Thursday. Why'd you say Thursday over Friday? Uh, I don't know, because I think Friday is the day where you go, oh, crap, I got to get all those done before I go in, <laughs> you know? So maybe you can do, <clears throat> maybe do a little bit more. Thursday's the day where you're like, and it's a long lunch, and I'm going to have a martini or four. Maybe that's just me. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that at all, but you're right. That's totally me on many Friday afternoons. Oh, I got to get all this stuff wrapped up. And then you do it yeah. in a third of the time. Yeah, just like vacation. But it uh, turns out we're both kind of right, huh? Thursday and Friday, Ty? Isn't, well, I think you're more right than me on this one, because Friday, I was pretty sure, was, was wrong. Thursday surprised me when you said that. No, I totally get it. Nice job, man. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, let's uh, not let you gloat. I'm let's. A, I am the king of knowing when not to work. <laughs> well, hey, let's throw out David Lifeline and tackle some of life's most important questions. Our friends at Haven Life put what you value first, this pumpkin spice latte. PSLs. Yes. And the muffin. I had it warmed up and uh, that's not good. By the way, coffee and a muffin first day in uh, back in Texarkana. And Nothing I, like getting something like really local, unique to the area. Definitely kind of going back to your roots. Oh, no, totally bad idea all the way around. Plus, what, $7.50 for a yeah. coffee and a muffin? What the hell am I doing? You gotta get the egg bites at Starbucks, man. Yeah. You ever had the egg bites? No. Don't. Because like, you'll never eat anything else ever for breakfast. Those like twelve fifty. <laughs> well, it's for, don't think about the cost. Think about how great Think the about value the benefit, is. the value, yeah. <laughs> the warmth you'll have knowing uh, that... There'll be a fire in Howard Schultz's fireplace for one more night because, <laughs> because of you. <laughs> yeah. But only if you do it by preloading your Starbucks card with $150 that they can keep on reserve on your behalf for 10 years. Here's the reason I did it, though, was because I want more time with my loved ones like you, OG. And yeah. so making breakfast fast this morning, since I don't have a coffee maker here, it's why they've actually made buying quality term life insurance actually simple. Head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash Haven Life now to get a free quote. Their prices are affordable. In fact, with the money I save on life insurance, I get to blow it on a blueberry muffin and that whipped cream of my drink. Application's simple. It's online. Uh, I drink enough of these. I'll probably get marked down a point or two, but who cares? I've got my Starbucks. That's one of the questions. When you go on Haven, like how many PSLs do you have a week during the fall? Did you see, this is morbid, but did you see the guy who died from eating black licorice, a bag and a half of black licorice every day? Yeah. Just horrible. Don't do that, people. Turns out it's bad for you. Yeah, it messes up your, uh, messes up your body. Everything. Well, it's the guy that, it's a guy a few years ago that died from, uh, he, he was having trouble falling asleep. So he decided, you know, NyQuil puts you out. So he had NyQuil every day and don't do that either. Cause that'll, well, and then you get the guy that stayed awake the whole time playing video games. I forgot about himself. that That guy, the he guy himself in by playing video games, China. No, no, no. Video games weren't the problem. Lack of sleep was a problem. He killed himself by playing video games. That's what I said. Yeah. So, uh, stacking Anyways, go get your life insurance <laughs> just in case you want to do any of these things. Get that done. Stacking forward slash Haven life. Now. Today, we're going to throw out the Haven Lifeline to our new friend, Tom. Say hi, Tom. Hi, Joe and OG. It's Tom from Houston, one of your two podcast listeners. Anyway, I have heard about value investing being better than the traditional dollar cost averaging, as it could end up with a lower average share price basis. Is it worth it to try value investing as it is quite a bit more complicated than dollar cost averaging? Thanks for all the great content for me to listen to while I train for a half marathon. Nice job, Tom, getting on it with the half marathon. Haven Life will like him better, huh? What a quitter. <laughs> Only got halfway. Why halfway, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> Take Come on, dude. Tom, we make three episodes a week. You've got, you've got plenty you've to train for the full marathon. Lots of time. No, nice That's job. Hey, getting, job. Your, getting your butt out there every day and doing that, that is tough work, my friend. Been there, mm -hmm. but lots of fun. And 
hugely rewarding when you do it to the point, oh, gee, that when I ran my first half marathon, I stayed in bed and moaned. I shouldn't tell time this at a time. I stayed in bed and moaned the entire rest of the day because my legs hurt like hell. And I couldn't yeah. sleep that night because my legs still hurt like hell. As they would. Yes. And that's the reward. <laughs> that's the yeah. that's the upside. Congratulations. You get a <laughs> 10 cent medal and a two nights of restless sleep. <laughs> Tom, I'm going to turn this over to OG because I'm curious about what uh, he has to say here. But I think you're looking at an apple and an orange here when it comes to value investing versus dollar cost averaging. Maybe two different things. That's exactly what I was going to say. Dollar cost averaging is a is a system for investing money, uh, $100 a month, $200 a month, whatever. That's just a program. Value investing would be a theory around what types of investments you would buy with your dollar cost averaging system. So value investing would focus heavily on companies that have lower price to book numbers. Probably one of the more famous value investors in our time is Warren Buffett, of course. Uh, Benjamin Graham is where he got his stuff from. So that sort of style of investing would be called value investing, but you can dollar cost average into your value investing. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, uh, you can go find the, you know, the blah, blah, blah value fund and put a hundred bucks a week into it. Then you're doing both. And people wonder what he's talking about, about lower cost for value investing. Let's talk about the two different types of investors here, Tom. You have growth investors and value investors, and they'll look at the same company in two different ways. Let's say the OG here owns a company cranking out pumpkin spice lattes, which is uh, just, I'm first in line every day at that drive through window. So OG, if I'm valuing that company as a growth investor, I know that tons of people love pumpkin spice lattes. He's pricing them less than Starbucks, and he also has a fantastic system of doing it across the country. So he's rolling this out very quickly. He's going to take over the world. Growth investors are worried about growth of the company. Is this company going to get such a big footprint that it can't be overtaken? Do they have a product that is good enough for them to take over the space? A value investor doesn't worry about that nearly as much. They look at the pieces of OG's company and said, okay, if I tore this company apart and sold it for pieces, what should the share price be? And if it's trading at $10 a share, and it should be trading, when I look at all the pieces, at $12 a share, that is a value. I've got a company that I think is underpriced, so I'm going in and I'm buying uh, an underpriced company. So there's a third type of investor out there that we've heard a lot of, and you may hear about in the future, called growth at a reasonable price. And that's somebody who wants a company that's taking over the world, but they want to make sure that even if things go bad, that that breakup price, that some of its parts price, still fairly close to what it should yeah. be. If you look at companies like Amazon from a value perspective, it's never made sense. And Amazon has just crushed it. <laughs> if, if you've owned Amazon stock for the past 15 years, cha-ching. Right. But they've got the product or the system that you're talking about that has taken, taken over the world. Yeah. Yeah. I think about it like companies that are trying to figure out whether or not they want to take all of their extra profits and invest it into more stuff, or do they want to take some of their profits and reward their shareholders and maybe improve on something that they already have. And like you said, use some of the profits for growing, but a lot of the profits for, for rewarding. So statistically, I think in the last, uh, 10, 12-ish years, if you're a value investor, you have gotten your face kicked in repeatedly uh, year after year. You didn't lose, but you got crushed by growth. Crushed, yeah. I mean, S&P 500 growth has destroyed value, but over long periods of time, value has done better than growth. So it's very cyclical. It's, it's impossible to predict you know, what style of investing is going to do well. Just like trying to decide is the U.S. or international going to do better or is big companies or smaller companies going to do better, which is why it probably makes sense to have a little bit of everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, OG, diversified approach. Thanks for the question, Tom. You got a question for the Haven Lifeline. We're going to throw some swag Tom's way that he can train in. It's cotton t-shirts, maybe not that great for that. But afterwards, he gets done, showers up after that tough workout, and uh, can go show everybody in the neighborhood 
that he listens to the greatest money show on earth, the Stacky Benjamin's Haven Life circus shirt. One of my favorites in, in Brad's line of shirts, stackybenjamins.com forward slash shirts to look at them all because he's got some he's got some crazy stuff. All right, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thanks so much. <laughs> Heather Jacks, just what a wonderful human being, and I'm so glad that she could be with us today. Uh, Doug will do all of the thank yous today. Two more quick things. Number one is if you know somebody who maybe needs to be inspired, it's probably a good show to point out to them, hey, you want to hear about a woman who was able to travel the world and not spend a lot. In some cases, she spent no money doing it. And then second, if you're somebody that needs better financial planning help in your corner, OG and his team still taking clients this year, head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash OG, and that will connect you to his team's calendar. And you can see how their team can intersect with your team to give you a better dashboard when it comes to your money. All right, that's going to do it for today. Doug, you've got it from here, man. What should we have learned today? Sure thing, Joe. I can give you a hand here. First, take a lesson from our headlines. Had debt forgiven? Don't be surprised if the tax man isn't very forgiving. Second, take a lesson from Heather Jacks. No money? Start with your goals and work backwards. Want to travel? There are plenty of ways to make it happen. But the big takeaway, good news. Turns out that Joe's mom said there's no way that I'm less productive on Thursdays and Fridays. She said I'm equally as productive on those days as all the rest, which seems weird, really, because I don't work that hard on those other days. Hey, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What's she trying to tell me? Special thanks to Heather Jacks for joining Joe today. You can find all about Heather at her website, travelingwithbubba.com, or on all social media platforms at Writer Jacks. But her favorite is Instagram. We'll have a link to her Instagram account on our show notes page at stackingbenjamins.com. This show is created by Joe Salcihai, produced by Richie Rudder Reese, and engineered by the amazing Steve Stewart. Online, visit us on Twitter at SBenjamin'sCast or on our Facebook page. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I'm wondering if KY Jelly is actually made in Kentucky. SB Podcasts may receive payment on the show from sponsors and guests in the form of books, giveaway items, discounts, or other remunerations. That's a big word. There's no way you take advice from these dorks, but like Joe's mom always says, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. And before making any financial decisions, consult with a real financial advisor. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I just brought this podcast in for a landing, and I'm feeling hashtag epic. Welcome to the after show. This is a part of the show that doesn't exist. Being back in Texarkana, we got here. Tomorrow, I leave for Operation Cat Rescue, which is I get on a plane at six o'clock in the morning, arrive in Lansing, Michigan at four in the afternoon and uh, drive my car, which is parked in Cheryl's uncle's driveway to Detroit, pile it full of as much stuff as as I can, but especially, especially the Xbox. Like, I don't really care what else goes in the car. You know, some art, maybe jewelry. I was going to say they got new Xboxes coming out, you know. 
Don't you know a guy that works at Microsoft? He can't uh, <laughs> throw you a little hook throw you a little bone. He actually already told me that he could hook me up, and he actually got a deal on it. And uh, and I said uh, no. He could get me a deal on the S, and I want yeah, the, yeah, yeah. and I want yeah. the X. Yeah, me so, too. Anyway, yeah, he he texted me the same thing. Okay, I can get you the S. Sure. I'm like, write me back when you get to the big boy table. <laughs> That's right. Nick. That's right. <laughs> Must not be high enough in the company to get Xbox X's on discount. It's, yeah. Got to move up the ladder, man. Yeah. Tell the CEO, tell Sadia, hey, move over, pal. But seriously, how many do you think he got? Do you think he was just like, guys, just, I want 10 of them. He didn't get like, any. Okay, hey, you have to get in line. Not, not Nick. I'm talking about the oh, CEO. Oh, the CEO. Yes. He's like, I don't care. They're like, sir, you can wait in line like everybody else. He's like, no, nah, I don't think so. Wouldn't it be funny if he had him on eBay and he was hawking them <laughs> on day one? <laughs> Oh, that, <laughs> actually, that's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, so then on Saturday after, as you know, we did, I think, 1800 miles in two days and I'm still tired, even though we were here all day yesterday, I feel like I got hit by a truck. I will then on Sunday or excuse me, Saturday be driving back with a cat, uh, 1400 miles. It's not 1,400 miles to Texarkana from it's Detroit. 2,600 miles. It's 1 million miles. It's 3,480 miles. Yes. yes. Another 1,000 miles. How about that? So, uh, yeah, good time. The thing that I don't really understand is, I mean, it really feels like I'm taking one for the team being up this early to record a podcast for you. And you're taking one for the team. Right. Being up so early, recording a podcast. I'm trying to figure out what the other third of this three legged stool partnership of this salsi high trifecta, <laughs> namely your bride. I'm trying to figure out what, what role she plays in this because, as I understand, she is presently retired. <laughs> and Why doesn't she get her ass to Michigan? It, and it sounds like, it sounds a lot like, and she's really, uh, she's a good supervisor. I've seen her drive, she's driven me places, she's a good driver. She's not so, a good driver. She's she's a wonderful human being and a horrible driver. But anyway, yeah. Okay, you're not making your case any stronger. But what I was going to say is you should be working. Good we point. should be recording podcasts at normal hours of the day. I see where you're going. She's a great driver. And put her ass on the airplane to go get the rescue cat. <laughs> I mean, she's not going to take your Xbox. She totally would leave that, but in lieu of that. But isn't it worth it? I'll tell you, she actually has the worst end of the process because... We got here yesterday. The people that lived here had not completely moved out yet. And the bad news is, is it's a small town and we actually know them from the last time that we lived here. I mean, we weren't buddies, but I know people that know him. As an example, Devin Carroll, our friend who has a social security intelligence YouTube page, he had the big picture retirement podcast. He works with Devin's partner. Mm. I was helping him take apart beds yesterday. And here's something that's, that's kind of gross. I jumped in the shower this morning. They had cleaning ladies over while we were moving in. By the way, we did move in early. That's a long story that we don't need to get into, but they couldn't close until later, but they did allow us to start moving in. So I'm moving stuff in. They're moving stuff out at the same time. Completely weird. But this morning I took a shower, first shower in my new place. And I look over and I realize that I didn't put any shampoo in the shower yet, but there's still shampoo and soap. There's a half a bar of soap right there. You oh. can just use that. Oh, dude. It's like the locker room from all their shower stuff still in the shower. Yeah. There was a kolache in the microwave. You said dude's loofah and Ada's kolache. <laughs> So, so, so I think she's got the worst end of the deal cleaned in this place because it is, uh, it's a little grimy, a little grimy. 